All righty, game three. Man, we have not seen much arena in Silver League. Um, we have seen a little bit, not a lot of it. We finally see it here. I was surprised uh, that Hope left arena and fortified clearing open on the draft. He might not play Samero a lot. He might not know a lot about Samero. Maybe he didn't look at some of the other drafts, but I think Samero will be in the driver's seat here uh, as he has Arena and Fortified Clearing remaining in his in his uh, draft. Uh, Hope has gone for the more traditional pick, the pick that we've been seeing a lot over the last year or two, uh, Burgundians. Burgundians are insane. They have cheaper eco upgrades, but they also can research it in age earlier. Uh, they have really strong melee options. They have really good gunpowder as well if they want to go that route. But usually the meta is have better economy, control the middle with light calf, and then just take it to late game. Uh, Samero, he's gone for the Portuguese. And keep in mind, this is kind of the new Portuguese uh, where they receive some wood while taking berries. And I said it when the sieve came out. I felt like that change, or not when the sieve came out, sorry, when that change came in. I felt like that change made Portuguese a bit stronger on like your standard land maps like Arabia. But it definitely added to a map where they were already strong in Arena. Uh, I mean, there's so many bonuses that they had before that were good on Arena. From the Fatoria and Imp, from the cheaper gold units, from the organ gun. What are we going to see here? Are we going to see maybe a castle drop? Like, I, I saw this crazy build order from one of my most trusted clowns named Aremku. And he went fast castle, castle drop, fast dimp, like six monks, trebs, fatorias. It was crazy. <laughs> I think realistically, or at the very least, I think whatever you're going to plan in Castle Age, you can get to easier. Um... And then there is still always the question of, like, do you want to make a lot of monks against Burgundians if Burgundians have the like have upgrade 50% off and all that economy? Probably not. So, we will see. Um, I did lose a game. Well, I lost two out of the three games in the series I played. Um, well, no, two out of two, because I lost 2-0 um, against Gunpowder. And, like, there's just certain situations where you just can't stop mass organ guns. Or mass genisserie. Like, 60 villager lead against full gunpowder is still dead. <laughs> like, you just can't run <laughs> on these types of maps. So, I could see Samaro having faith in it. And also, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the scene. But if you think of players that Samaro is talking to and playing with a lot, it's players like Madri, players like Ganji, players like Barls, Valis. Like, and all those guys are pretty good on the closed maps. So, they're not all necessarily known for it as much of others. So, okay. Um, <laughs> total and brutal domination T90 Silver League. Hope soon a bronze league with 24 and Silver League with the same rolls of platinum and gold. Well, Alonzo, the main issue with adding a bronze league is a lot more work for admins, right? Which means, at least the way I run things, I'm paying my people good. I want to make sure if they're working on this stuff, that they're getting paid well because they deserve it, as do the players and their opportunities. The other thing is, in terms of like the prize pool and the balance of it, is if there was a bronze league, silver league already, we can't really like. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have a ton of money in silver. Um, so then it's like, do we want to have a league and make it really competitive if we can't have prize pool for these competitors? And how serious are they going to take it if for that? And how much work do we want to put into this and that? So the goal for me. Um, in the long run with this whole system is I, I think like having a bronze league would be really good but we would need to have more prize pool each series uh, not each series each season and then there's more of a spread so obviously platinum gets a bit more then gold gets a bit more then silver gets some and then maybe bronze doesn't I mean it would depend but with the economics of it and with how much time it takes and how much how many games have to be played, uh, I've been around long enough to know that, like, if I were to do a bronze tomorrow, I think there would probably be some scheduling issues and some, um, let's just say, you know, people won't, won't take it as seriously. We don't have a lot of pro players who are full-time already. 
So if they're if it's just like a funsy league for really good players, a lot of them might not be able to to make it happen at the same level we want here. Does that make sense? I hope those factors are making sense. Uh, by the way, we are going to see some wicked crazy uptime here from Samero, so don't look away from that. But yeah, if we're going to do things, like I'm a big quality over quantity person, I want to make sure that there are as many players competing with quality opportunities and motivation as possible, but it has to be done right. I think there's a lot of things that you could do, uh, people have done, including myself, that are good ideas, but it might not be at the right time with the right structure. And then maybe we can have a tin can league for all you guys out there watching. We can have the um, the Menor League, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, <laughs> insert here league for all the noobs out there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, Copper League, Aluminum, Wood, Paper, Toilet Paper. Yeah. Dude, the build order here for Samero is pretty nuts, man. Because the thing is, you can go up two or three villagers faster because you don't need to have as many villagers on wood. Normally for the blacksmith market, you need to have like six to seven on wood. So you're getting more food. or you, you? I guess you're like getting as much food as before, but you prioritize the food earlier. So you're getting food a little faster. And then you have less on wood and it equates to a pretty crazy uptime. Okay, so let me put this more in perspective. What I was told and what I tested with all my practice is the cleanest play with Burgundians into stable is 25 plus 2, which is what we're seeing here. So we had 25. You have to wait for the blacksmith. You have to wait for the stable. Where is the blacksmith? Oh, God. This is going to be 25 plus 3, actually. Or was it 24? Mm, anyways... What I was told, and in my practice sessions, 25 plus 2, at least on Fortified Clearing, is really strong. Because basically, all your farms are horse collar farms, if you do it that way. You have zero idle time. The stable production is really easy. It's really clean. So the reason I bring that up is because I don't want you to look at Red's position right now and say that Red is doing something wrong, right? Red is doing something Burgundians are very good at. And he actually just killed Samaro's scout there. Oh boy, will he see the vills? Oh my god, he doesn't see the vills. The horse had to stop for a water break. Oh, it's going to be a forward castle. I mean, I don't know if you could really stop it. I think even if you scout it. Oh, the villagers didn't have loom, so you might have created a scout a little earlier or something. But scouting it obviously would have helped here. It wouldn't have led to you killing villagers necessarily. I think Samaro probably would wall them in. And I'm no castle drop expert, but something I've always said is if you're castle drop some castle dropping someone, you want to castle drop one of their golds. Because then the villagers at home are all working on everything else. And then you can just put a mining camp next to their gold and the villagers are immediately working. And whether it doesn't matter what Civ you're castle dropping with, you're gonna want that gold. Especially if you're an arena player, because a lot of those guys are buying food and things anyways. So I I genuinely don't know what you do in Red's position. You can't compete for relics easily because you're going to have pressure up in your face. This is kind of what I tried to do when I was up against Turks in my game. Um, so I had actually held map control with scouts, which made him force his castle at home. Then there's a certain number of organ guns it just feels like you can't deal with. But what I did was I dropped the defensive castle to like stop the pressure from adding up. Hmm. Um, one thing I'm going to say, and Samaro just bought wood, which kind of proves my point. He really doesn't have a lot on wood now. And organ guns cost quite a bit of wood. Okay, so let's see how Hope handles this. He's got golds in the back, which is really nice. The stone being forward, though, obviously isn't. The organs can now run in. Now, I don't know if it's worded like this in the uh, tech tree for the organ guns, but Siege is supposed to be a semi-decent counter. Uh, that villager should die. There we go. This villager should die as well. So that's two villagers dead already. <laughs> but like, Siege isn't really that good of a counter because the organ guns can one-shot the Siege if they get to a mass like this. And the organ guns just melt everything, man. 
But I mean, you've got to try. You have to hop out, try and hit, and then dodge and repair. You have no other choice. I'm telling you, new Portuguese are insane. New Portuguese castle drop, I'm not really sure what you can do about it if you have a civilization that can't rely on good monks. Which is interesting because, like, Turks don't have the greatest of monks. Burgundians. I guess Bohemians do. I was trying to think of other civs that are really good on this map right now. Okay, waited for two mangonels, which is nice. Sometimes you'll see monks then to convert the siege from the Portuguese player. And like I said, like that, how are you supposed to use mangonels realistically against this unit? <laughs> I feel really bad for Hope because this crap happened to me, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Good micro from Samero. He's repairing it and everything. Like, okay, congrats. You killed one. <laughs> I think guard tower is semi-realistic, where he could have prepped the tower right away and then maybe got the stone for another one. But then you can't boom on town centers. And then all the Portuguese guy's going to do, I think, is just buy food all the time to go fast and faster than you. But yeah, maybe it's something to try. I mean, he could get a pretty big shot here. Samaro has the weaker ones in the back, which is really smart. But yeah, he just wants to take the siege workshop out here. Red will obviously uh, try and stop the relics. That scout is still out there, so that's something to pay attention to. The siege workshop will go down. Red has one mangonel, has two TCs, and believe me, it's not easy to do what you need to do in this game if you're under this much pressure. What about four knights? Nope, they'll have monks and a castle fire, so they'll just fall back. Like, the issue is also timing, right? It's not the number of units, it's how fast it happens. We just hit the 20-minute mark. Oh, man. Samaro got really housed. Samaro only working off of three farms. I think ideally you have more than that right now. So you can ease your way towards Imp. This could also be... The, the plan could also be a second castle eventually. Town centers already lost 200 HP, but more mangonels here from Hope. Who does have the villager lead. And no! No! Oh, Hope could kill this. There's no way Hope's looking at that right now. That's the problem, right? Normally, the patrol is on attack stance, though. I have to say, I'm really surprised Samaro hasn't gone for redemption. He has the gold. He has the monks. He wants to get the relics first. I'm also surprised he's not repairing. Hope might actually have a chance here. I don't know how he'll ever drop a castle, but having two golds in the back is super nice. Do scouts also die? Yeah, scouts, scouts don't do enough damage, right? The scouts have so low attack. Okay. There's there's sanctity. So that gives the monks more HP. It looks like the scout was actually converted here. And then he's gonna have his own siege here. But I, I would be shocked if Samaro doesn't research redemption now. All that gold's gotta go directly into redemption. And yeah, it must be in that monastery. The gold disappeared. Let's see how the conversions work. Doesn't have it yet, right? Does not have it just yet. And these units, they're in an awkward spot. Oh, man. Hope. Not folding, not crumbling to this strat. Let's go. Only 10 farms. That's not great, but does have more villagers. And is now going to buy a castle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This could be bad. I mean, you have to drop it here, right? Because you need to keep your TCs up. You don't want to drop it here and then just lose your town centers. Ooh, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. Here comes Samaro. Samaro has the same idea. <laughs> and he actually, he sees this and says, eh, okay, let's just drop it in the back. Okay, we are going to see food purchased in five, four, three, two, one. Well, it's not going to happen yet. The monks need to convert their siege. Redemption monks in... But the monks are getting shot by the TC. One old man is down. This castle's going to go up, you'd think. And Samara's going to back up, and now he's going to buy that food. I am so in tune with clowns, it's unbelievable these days. Clown 90 official has changed my life. So you do all this to defend. You do all of it, and you're like, yeah, baby, I've stopped it. These organ guns haven't taken out my TC. 
I'm a freaking god. And yet, five farmers over there is going to carry this guy to Imp because of the market. And so then the next step in this whole thing is you just get trebbed down. This is insane. I, this is insane. I don't know what more Red could have done. Besides making scouts in feudal and delaying his castle age and stopping the castle. If the castle's on the back, or like if it's back here, it's a different game, obviously. I think he's just dead. <laughs> this is so well executed from Samaro. I, I don't want to take anything away from him because the thing that makes this strategy insane is it has to have perfect execution every step of the way. But I mean, it's a 6 to 4 KD here. The guy doesn't even have all five relics, and yet he finds himself in a spot to win this game. Samaro, though, seriously, can you pull like 10 of these vills and make another lumber camp? The price of wood has to be getting expensive here. Because I think continuing to buy wood gives an opportunity for the other person to sell wood to get more gold in the event that he's running low on gold. Obviously, that's not happening right now, but when you want to make trebs, you're obviously going to want more wood. Yeah, Petro, the, the tricky thing is, like, one scout against ten unloomed vills. The scout's not going to kill more than one. And then when they see that one scout, they're going to wall in their vills. So it's really complicated to know what to do. I think, um, to, in order to stop this, you need to not take the initial scout fight, so you have a full HP scout, and maybe make two or three scouts before you go in castle. But that's so, like, it feels so bad if you do that, if they don't make the castle forward. Red is Red has put up a really good fight here. I think he's done better than most people would in this situation. Better than most people would, though, is still going to lead to him getting completely massacred. Like, if you think he's housed now, <laughs> just wait until he loses everything to Trebs. <laughs> yeah, block printing for the monks. So they now have 12 range. Gordon guns. Not really anything you need to upgrade, right? They're so good in their base version, their Castle Age version. We might see a Fatoria too. So there you go. That takes up some pop space, but that also will bring a trickle of all resources here for Samaro. This is just so good. He, he, for the first time in the game, has seven on wood. He's never had more than seven on wood. Which just seems so crazy, right? Also, remember, Red bought that castle. He's not repairing that. There's no way. Also, that's his imp TC. I mean, obviously you want to make it to imp, but I still don't know what you do when you're in imp. That's my main thing. There's, there's just not a unit that you could realistically go for that doesn't get countered. Samaro. Gonna get chemistry too, so the opportunity for bomber cannons is there. Making a few outposts just to make sure that the opponent hasn't really, like, snuck out anywhere, because if your opponent's inside of here... They are completely without stone and other resources soon. Uh, Imp will come in for red. But red is making stables now. Probably thinking, let's try Cavalier. Let's try Light Cav or something. And yeah, there's the Cavalier upgrade. But it's going to take a lot of resources to get those techs in. Uh, no blacksmith technologies at all right now. And still, Organ Gun Monk takes care of it, right? As long as blue doesn't have any massive misplays, right? As long as his monks see the siege all the time, he's fine. He can convert all of these units. Yep, and he's going to take the siege now. He's going to take one. He's going to take two, and he's going to take three. He might not take this one. So that could hurt a little bit, because it could get some shots. Um, good micro from red here. Okay, so now we have the Custia going in. And uh, the organ guns and the monks are going to dominate it. And Red's got to be shaking his head like, why on earth didn't I ban freaking Arena? Why did I not ban Arena from this guy? What was I thinking? Now, you can't let those thoughts dominate your mind because it's a best of five. But there's the GG. And man, did Smero make that look easy. I genuinely do not know how you counter that right now unless you have a different Civ. Like, the one weakness of Burgundians I've found in my games and some of the other games I've seen and now this... It's just like these YOLO, castle drop, gunpowder monk plays that Turks and Portuguese are really good at. That's crazy. Um, 
I mean, look at the difference in the food in Woodyco. Normally that makes a difference when Burgundian's in our game, but not here. Red even had back golds too, right? Like his gold was back uh, here and here, but the pressure just came so fast. What was the uptime? The uptime was 1339. <laughs> 1530 felt so slow. Oh man. So I think realistically, the only way you stop it is I think you go for uh, like a tower rush of sorts. But the version of Arena we use is uh, it's untrushable, basically, because you have 1,800 HP walls. Fortified Clearing, Tower Rush is kind of a strategy because you have 1,000 HP walls. But we did more of the classic Arena, where the walls are really, really strong. So, I mean, in theory, you could go for Feudal Age Towers and, like, and they Castle Drop here. And I guess that's a positive. But then your Castle Age time is in 1530. Your Castle Age time is, like, 21 minutes behind a Tower Rush that never does anything. So, yet again, I mean, that's just really tricky strategy to stop. And we'll see if Samaro has something else in, in the works for that if we end up getting to his other home map, which is Fortified Clearing. 